Hello everybody, we are back. It's the marriage mechanics. Uh listen, we are talking about um part two. This is part two of today's topic, which is help I'm afraid that I'm losing my spouse. He or she's changing and, and I'm, I'm scared. scared. And 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 uh, a lot of times people don't have because when you become insecure in your marriage, people don't have um confidence or friends that they're really comfortable with talking about that that are spiritual who are focused on making it happen hey mika thanks you for coming back hey sheena thank you for joining us uh, and so we covered first corinthians chapter 7 33 34 35 uh 32 through 35 verses this book i would have I would have you without carefulness, he that is unmarried care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord, but he that is married care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Um, there's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. Wow. The unmarried woman care for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and spirit, but she that is married care for the things of the world how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a sneer upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Now, just for time's sake, I just want to uh, recap for those who didn't see the first um, episode who are just joining us now. Um, you must, number one, we said, you've got to remember that no one remains the same. So it's necessary to be flexible while being balanced. Number two, we said, figure out what stage in life your spouse is in. That's, so don't freak out about the change. Yeah, that's very important. That's figure very out what important. stage in life they're in. Number three, we said, seek God for wisdom on how to deal with your spouse. And he'll let you know what's going on. He'll give you wise counsel. He'll direct you. He'll tell you what to say, how to say it, when to say it, what to do. Yes, because indeed. sometimes they just need that encouragement, that support, that love, you know, because a lot of times it's hard to tell somebody what's going on with you if you don't know what's going on with you. I don't hey, know why I'm feeling we'll this way. It. I don't know why I'm in this place. And so that's where prayer, um, you sure, being blah, 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 blah. a partner in prayer and intercession is really key. Then we said, um, even though your spouse may have changed, your responsibility to your spouse has not, and it does not. And then we also said, when you begin the sense of change in your spouse, communicate that to them and hear them out. They'll usually let you know um, okay. exactly mm -hmm. right. Hey, Joanne, thank you for joining us. Hey, Daniel, thanks for coming back. Uh, and so the last point we covered on the last um, episode, on the last uh, part, live feed part, was yeah. create an uh, atmosphere that is comfortable. Mm -hmm. For proper communication to take place. Other words, get out of your feelings. No, I'm not going to tell you what's going on with me because you're going to have an attitude. I'm struggling with lust or I'm struggling with pornography or I've been secretly going to the strip clubs and I'm, now I feel like I may be addicted. I started back taking painkillers. Now I'm drinking. Uh, I'm sex texting. I'm addicted to, um, you know, phone sex, whatever it is. Whatever your spouse is struggling with that may be pulling them away from you, um, you've got to create an atmosphere where they are comfortable with coming to you and laying those things down. Mm -hmm. Hey Kai, thank you for joining baby girl. And so we, we got to break this cycle. The enemy is very cunning. The enemy is very crafty when right. he comes in to tear down marriages. And so this, this, um, that silent change is the most deadly because if you respond in fear and not faith, then the enemy has already defeated you. That's right. You got to remember, listen, you got to remember by creating that atmosphere, what you're doing is you're opening the door for future communication. Right. You're opening the door for future uh, revelation and understanding of your wife right. or your husband. Absolutely. The Bible declares that the husband should dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Right. And, and that the wives are to uh, submit themselves into their own husbands. What it mean by submitting? It, it doesn't mean that you you're, you're not a slave. It's not. It doesn't mean that you're doing everything, but you're taking it upon yourself the responsibility to know your spouse and to understand their needs. You have to become Moses the deliverer when it comes to your spouse. Say that. You've got to tell Pharaoh to let your spouse go. Like. 
Come on. I wish a heifer would. I wish, I wish a heifer would try to come through here. I would torment her so bad and frustrate her life. I would frustrate her purpose in life. Because I'm that chick. I'm going to come to your door. You're not going to just take my husband. Her, her purpose, purpose in life will be frustrated life, dealing Lord, with me. Jesus. Because I would come and knock I on the door every night, restraining order or not. Go to jail, get back out. Go to jail, get back out. I got a whole team of girls that think just like I think. So we'll be doing a rotation on that butt. So when I'm in jail and I'm locked up, team number two is knocking on your door. We will follow you to your job. I will follow your kids to the school and I will let them know, you know your mom's committing adultery. You know that's the Mary me and you know that's my husband. I will show up at your mama's house. I will show up at your church and tell your pastor. And if you ain't in church, or what, I will be at the club. Every man that try to holler at you. I would, I mean, you wouldn't have any peace with my husband. I would go around and broadcast all types of stuff against you. I mean, the blood of Jesus and the wrath of Lynn would be against you. And so I'm, I'm not going to give up my husband. And so you got to fight. You have to make it up in your mind and in your spirit that failure is not an option. Okay, so what you can do a few little tricks. I'm going to take those pole dancing lessons and my husband's out there in the strip club. I'm going to get that portable pole, put it up in my bedroom. I'm going to get the singles boo. You don't even have to try to figure out where the money's coming from. I'm going to slap it up, flip it, and I'm going to rub it down. Oh, I know no. how to get the strobe lights. What? I can become my own little DJ. I'm not going to be listening to Jesus on the main line when I'm shaking it on that pole for Big Daddy. Like, you've got to really make up your mind that you're willing to do whatever it takes what? to make your marriage work. Sha ba 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 Hey, y'all, I see y'all chiming in. <laughs> but, okay, he's not talking, so I know. It, it, it's, it's kind of like this. When the marriage gets... Tense when the growing gets tough. That's when the woman of God uh, gets steps her game all the way up. Like who knows? He might have something else. Some little young thing might have caught his eye. Come on, don't play with it. And so uh, you know, stop putting on those little square toed church lady shoes. Uh, sh I watch my husband because I used to wear sneakers, blue jeans, and a t shirt with a little cheap nine dollar ponytail every day, every went. When I first met my husband. But I noticed his eyes were going to the ladies with the sling dresses. And the stilettos. And a little lipstick. And a little nails. and mm. So uh, we had to talk about it. And he told me that he felt like I was dressing like his grandma. Now my feelings were hurt. I was all letting my feelings. But I made the adjustment. Sha ba 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 ba. <laughs> you see that smile, right? And so um, it could be that. It could be the way you're spending money. Because the next episode we're going to do on Tuesday is... Uh, you know, I married, I'm in love with a stripper. I married a gold digger. Uh, no, we're not doing I married a gold digger. I'm in love with a stripper. That's afterwards. That's the, that's I'm, in love with a, I'm in love with a stripper is what we're doing Tuesday. And so we, we got to get to the place where whatever it is that's pulling our spouses away from us or captivating them or getting more of their focus and attention than us and God, we shift that. Uh, tell your neighbor, overthrow. overthrow. By any means necessary. Whatever it is. It could be his she mama. She it could be. Got this girl Malcolm X up in I'm dead. I'm so marriage. dead, like, dog. Serious about this right here. Plymouth Rock landed on us. I'm telling you, I don't play the radio when it comes to my marriage, and so you've got to be aggressive and you've got to be relentless. Oh no, oh no, boo boo. These extra ten pounds is not gonna turn my husband off or cause him to struggle. And if he's got issues, because ladies, let me tell you something else. I didn't experience it in this relationship, but I dated a whole lot of. I pray that I never do in Jesus' name. But I dated a whole lot of older men when I was younger. And men become extremely insecure when they have issues with getting an erection or maintaining an erection. So there may be something physical going on with his body, and that's why he's not touching you. It doesn't mean he doesn't love you. He's not attracted to you. He may have his own internal insecurities, and that's why you've got to smoke those things out by creating such a peaceful atmosphere and such a strong um, atmosphere of trust to where he feels confident and tell you that. Let Viagra be your friend or go to Todd's and get work it out. Like failure is not an option. Like what's gonna happen? I don't know what is ain't gonna happen. What is gonna happen, but I know what's not gonna happen. We death gonna do us part. And um if your spouse death is going to do us part. And and uh, and usually if your spouse is not able to handle this level of communication, maybe it's not it maybe it's not what you're saying, but it's, maybe it's how, how you're, you're saying, saying it. it. You, are you saying it in a loving manner, or are you arguing? Are you are you argumentative? Are you on the defensive? Are you trying to cut him down, or it, her, or her, or it? See, it, if you that's Ugh. why it's important that you make sure that you're creating an atmosphere 
That is communicating. That that is easy for communication. I want to deal with these men for one minute. Oh Lord. Man, it's so not sexy when you Lord become desperate and start Jesus. begging where you going and who you with and I look in your phone and get a life. There is nothing more sexy than a confident man. I'm telling you, there is nothing more sexy than a confident man. What are you afraid of? Yes, you're being tense and creating stress and communication when you're coming because you're operating out of fear. You're afraid that you're going to lose. You're afraid another man's going to get your goods. Step up your game. If you handle your business and making sure you're looking right, smelling right, right, dressing right, producing what you need to produce, praying your life is in alignment with God, she can clearly see the vision. Uh, she sees you living what you preach or what you teach. It's going to be easy for you to win her, but if there's a lot of hypocrisy and a lot of double-mindedness and you got her with all these bogus, broken promises and you've not made good on any of them and then when she tells you when you're going to do this and you don't take out the trash, I'm telling you, pump the gas and take out the trash. You don't have to worry about losing your spouse. Pump the gas, take out the trash along with the other stuff. But uh, this man caught me at the gas station. That's why my husband pumps the gas right now to this day for me because this man had me captivated. His game was smooth and all this stuff. And my husband said, wait a minute. Because if I would have had that gas pumped, you wouldn't even, he would have never even saw you or had an opportunity because I had had this long conversation with this guy. Um, he had uh, basically seduced me in my mind. And I called my husband. I'm like, babe, I'm going through something. I'm feeling some type of way with this guy. I accepted his business card. I should not have. And, you know, the, the things that he said and I'm thinking about him. And my husband was like, wait, 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 wait. So I was thinking he was going to, you know, say, well, you my wife, you shouldn't be listening. You shouldn't do this. You sh he didn't do any of that. He said, where were you? When was this? Why were you there? I said, I was you know, putting some gas in the car and this and that and the other. And so he took responsibility. Mm -hmm. He said, honey, the, God already told me to look upon you as the weaker vessel. The fact that you're telling me about this tells me you have no intentions of cheating on me or messing up what we have. So I don't want you to beat yourself up about this. He said, this is just an indicator that as a man, I need to step up step my game. Up because look, 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 bait ain't bait. If you're you not hungry. hungry. That so, was powerful. So I want to make sure that, fellas, you got to be secure, man. If your wife is telling you something, it's, it's because, listen, fellas, if your wife is telling you something, if your wife is telling you something, it's because she wants to be saved by you. And I, she, I was, she, she's not trying to run out and cheat on you. Right. She wants to be saved by you. You. She yes. wants you to be her deliverer. She wants you to be her way maker. She wants you to open up the door and draw her and reel her back in. But if you acting a zip fool, man, what you want, what you really going to do is push her out the door, right, and right into the arms of another. That's why it's very, very important that you create such a wonderful atmosphere for communication. Yeah, the communication may be tough. What's being said, you may not want to hear it. Right. But the bottom line is, it is necessary for the growth and development and establishment of your marriage. You want to go, the Bible says we should be going from faith to faith and from glory to glory right. in all things, not just in church, in our marriages, in our families, in our businesses, everything that we lay our hands to do. We should be going from faith to faith and from glory to glory. So, fellas, ladies, you need to be open to what's being said. Right. And, and, and hey, Raven, thank you for joining. Um, it was just so, uh, it was such a big relief for me when he didn't trip about me right, getting sucked well, into this conversation with this guy. Well, what, what's the purpose of me tripping? I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. I'm the prophetess. I shouldn't but, uh, that, be that, even entertaining that, down conversation. Down me nut. Down, I me shouldn't. Nut, down me nut. Prophetess or not. Pastor or not. Apostle or not. Y'all are open and susceptible to temptation. If Jesus, being the son of God, was open and susceptible to temptation, so are we. The only difference is he was able to endure and he did it with wisdom and the word. And the bottom line is we have to do the same thing. Right. We have to have that open line. Wisdom says maintaining and keeping an open line of communication with your spouse protects you, protects your spouse, protects your marriage. Absolutely. Protects everything that you have done to build what it is that you have. But as long as you keep pretending oh like you're perfect and you got it all together, I'm telling you, 
calamity is soon to come. And it, it could all be avoided. Um, I, I thank God that I'm married to my best friend. I thank God that I don't have to keep anything. Best friend. Boy, you is. Not you are. You is. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So um, it, it was just a, a sigh of relief, but I felt guilty. Because I felt like I had cheated just as a result of that conversation because of where I allowed my mind to wander. You got to pull down those of you that are, um, you are that vague, ambiguous, kind of distant spouse in the marriage. Pull down those vain imaginations. And I, I mean, it was tough for me. But after my husband said what he said and he was like, no, that's my fault. And I was like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And he was like, yeah. Because if I had stepped up and been on top of my game, you wouldn't have been at the gas station anyway. The only time you should be at the gas station, station is when you're sitting on the passenger side while we are riding someplace together and I am going in to pay and pump for the gas and so it, it gave me a revelation it freed me and so now I'm able to talk about it uh the big thing is you got to be able to talk about it because so many women we counsel and women's like I can't tell him or women will confide in me what their you know their secret desires and secret and sexual things and they're like I, I can't tell him because he's gonna trip why F fellas why why? Why can you not have your? Why can your wife not come and tell you? Why, women? Why can your husband not come and tell you the things that they're struggling with, the things that they're dealing with? You are supposed to be in covenant relationship with one another. It's crazy to think that you can't share with your spouse. What you're struggling with. Who better to pray for you? Right. Who better to keep you covered? Who better to be there and watchful over what's going on in your life? But your spouse. That's that's insanity to me. It's, it's, it's challenging, but a lot of times we marry people who are more insecure than we are. We think they're better. We think they're stronger. We think they're wiser. I'm just speaking for women. We want a man that's stronger than us. We want a man who's wiser than us, who can teach us, who can lead us, who can cover us, who can protect us. And so it's it's just hard to fathom the thought of your protector and your covering being weak as water. But I want to tell you, the word of God says man must look upon the woman as the weaker vessel. If, if she is weaker... That means he, he is, is weak. weak. And so right, you've right. just got to identify the areas where there's predominant weakness in him. And that's why it's important to have the Lord. That's why it's important to seek the Lord. Because the Bible says that it, when you are weak, he is there to make you strong. Yes. So it's very important to Apply seek the God. word. Apply the word. You have to. Um, we had another point. It says be open to change. Listen. I, oh, my God. You, you Listen. Oh, my God. I'm going to say Church that one people. more again. One more again. Questions. One more again. I'm talking about us. Be open, open to, to change. change. Listen, there's nothing wrong with change, people. Be open to change, okay? It Because they're changing, that means you have to change. Not only that, men have... Uh, remember that men are visionaries. And so I just want to go this... Oh, we counsel good. a lot of people. And that's so good. these women don't want to make adjustments. Men oh, are visionaries. Oh. Listen, listen. He's so intelligent. That's gonna bless you. <laughs> this is the good part. Hold up. This is the good part. Um, men are visionaries, and they know what looks good to them. Don't try to dictate to him what he likes. If he says, "Babe, I think you need to try blonde," even though you think you look like Big Bird, put the blonde in there. Let him tell you I don't want to see that blonde. Nah, baby, that didn't work. That ain't what I thought it was. Fella, same Become thing. Become his palette or his muse or his. Um, you know, men love a woman that's moldable, not weak, but moldable. If you can submit, if you can flow with me and move with me, flow I'll be with you forever. Flow and so, with so if, if, if they want like the big booty, like we counsel this one couple, she, she was part of the itty bitty titty committee, but her husband was a breast man. <laughs> Her husband was a breast man, and that 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 taste and that desire and that appetite evolved over years because they had been together a long, long time. And um, you know, I think like high school or something or another. And I don't know, he had gotten into a porn addiction or something. It was some crazy. I don't remember all the specific details, but he wanted her to get some double D's. And she was like, why should I go through that? He's trying to make me look like a porn star. He's trying to make me look like an ex from his past. I'm not doing that. I said, silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. Just because you don't want to go and get those boobs put on your chest, that's not going to change his desire or his attraction to them. What you're going to do is open up the door, sha ba 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 ba, for a friendly female who happens to already have double D's to come right on in and swoop your 18 year marriage 
You know, and so it was hard for me to get her to say, I don't believe in plastic surgery. I don't believe in this. You don't believe in being married to a man that, that desires double Ds. Now, you know, in her defense, you want to, if, if you love me and this was good when we got together, um, I, I get her position of not wanting to change, but I'm not that type of female. My husband, and I, we don't have to talk about it twice. I have wigs. I have weave. I have clothes. I've gotten fully dressed and ready to walk out the door. He's like, man, I don't like that change. I don't even say, oh, man, I don't like, what do I do when you say change? Babe, I don't like that change. She go right in there and change it. Immediately. And then before I put on something else, baby, what you think about this? That's good. I need you to understand you need to be open to change. He's the visionary. He knows what looks good to him. Who cares what you think? You're going to be looking good to you by yourself? That's stupid. And ladies, I'm going to say this to you. If you go going to church looking hot and sexy for your husband, hmm. go to church looking hot and sexy for your husband. Hmm. Bump them other chicks in the church. Oh, my listen, God. Listen, listen. <laughs> that's your marriage. Handle your marriage with your husband, okay? I don't caught a let, lot of flack. Don't, don't let other people tell you how to dress for your husband. Yeah, they told me I was dressed like Jezebel because I wear stilettos and long eyelashes. and But, I, but I like a lot the, of you ladies being Jezebel, a lot lips. of you ladies being Jezebel trying to control somebody else and what they're doing for their husband, back the heck up. Amen, Jesus. Yeah, that's that's coming from a place, man. Get off your soapbox. Because the women in the church didn't hit me up. And, and I was went to me. Because he had my little cleavage out and my little tight jeans. And, and I like that when we're on our date night. But in the church, I'm uncomfortable with it. And um, it was just difficult. If you uncomfortable, tell it. You uncomfortable. Don't be uncomfortable because the other people... Well, talk. I was uncomfortable because the other people were talking. Mm. It wasn't because I, you know, I was liking how you was feeling me and things was happening. Hey, popping yeah. immediately after uh, service. So that's yeah. why I kept wearing it's it. It's my marriage. Shut up, bye, bye, bye. Ooh, babe. I, disclaimer, for those of you who are religious, please wear your long dresses and your polyester suits and your big hats. Shut bye, 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 bye. What's up, Pastor Christina? Thank you for joining us all the way from California. Next, um, we said... Do not allow yourself to be a manipulator or manipulated. A lot of times when uh, the spouse is changing, one of two things either happens. You either start trying to manipulate your spouse into changing back or you become the manipulated, meaning you're allowing your spouse to manipulate and you. And dominate. And dominate you into something. Now, we're not talking about uh, uh, resisting or rebelling against authority, especially in in the sense of uh, of Christian authority. What we're talking about is being uh, manipulated. Threesome. Things that are sin. sinful. Sinful. That's right. Things that are sinful. Don't, don't that's why we're going to deal with that on Tuesday. Yeah. I'm in love with the stripper because that strip club and that pornography, Ain't nothing man, that's, that stuff is no joke. I was bound by that stuff so long. So and it I. was so deeply embedded in me. And it was just, it, it takes a unique individual to even birth deliverance on that level. Even if the person wants deliverance, you as the spouse, you have to go step by step with them. Um, and, and, and just, but when it, we we're talking about this manipulation, you have to declare what God said. So you feel yourself being manipulated. You say that, look, I know you're going through something, but what, what we're not going to do is allow a manipulation to be added to the unclean spirits that right. are trying to enter into this marriage. So we cast that down. This is what we're going to do. This is what God says about it. I've got your back. I love you no matter what. You're not going to lose me in this. I'm going to be here, but we're going to have to play by God's rules according to what the word That's of God right. says to walk That's out right. of this rough, through this rough terrain. Uh, the next point that we had, uh, we had another note that says as long as it's not a sin so support your spouse in their change it's going to benefit you in the long run and I'm a witness listen listen that's very important if they're not asking you to sin chill out chill out and, and I'm, we're talking about sins that is a sin in the bible not sin because so and so and such and such said it is be, let it be a legitimate sin in the bible if it's a if it's nothing the Bible actually says nothing about, don't make something up. Don't go with something that's been made up. That's why it's important for you to know the word for yourself. And don't block them. Another thing we, we run into a lot is hypocrisy because um, you want to impose or infringe your convictions on your spouse. We were... Um, don't do that. My husband and I were having dinner with a couple of friends of ours last week or earlier this week. And um, the wife is, um, she likes to drink wine, a glass of wine with her dinner, which she used to when she got, when she met him. But because he doesn't drink, she completely stopped drinking. Hey, Keisha, woman of God, uh, Keisha Jordan, thank you for joining us. And so she liked to drink wine. She wanted to drink wine, but she only wanted to do it with her husband. And because he 
uh, was very convicted by the, I think it's Proverbs 16 and 1 right, or 15 or something. It was in Proverbs. Just, no, there's a scripture that says, wine is a mock strong, strong drink, drink is a raging, and whosoever is, deceived. Proverbs 20 and 1, I believe, whosoever is deceived, uh, thereby, thereby is not, not wise. wise. And so she, um, she, he, it was his conviction. And my husband ministered something that was powerful because we actually went through this. Um, I wanted to, him to drink with me and he said no. Um, cause I was drinking cause I enjoyed drinking until I got drunk and fell on the plane. Uh, well, well, before I got drunk and fell on the plane when I was dancing on the table, that's what made me stop. And so 10 years went by and I didn't drink at all anymore. It wasn't Jesus that made me stop drinking. I embarrassed myself. And so, uh, to make a long story short, my husband said, minister to the wife, he said, if, um, if it's his conviction, if it, if it goes against his conscience, then it puts him in a sinful state. It may not be sin for you because there's no conviction for you to have a glass of wine with your dinner. But if it takes him to a place or if it's going to disrupt or disturb his relationship with God in some way, don't encourage him to do anything that's going to do that. And that was a very tactful way of saying to him, one can drink and one can not, and you can both still be in the will of God as long as there's no drunkenness attached to it. Um, and, and so little bitty things, when we talk about being open to change and supporting your spouse, even if it's a little uncomfortable for you, check. The, all you have to ask is, is there anything, is the Holy Spirit convicting you on this? If they have no conviction, don't keep pushing that issue because you become a nag and you become contentious and you disrupt the peace in the marriage. You don't want to lose a good thing. You want to keep things spicy, hot, popping, and flowing around there. But in order for that to happen, the two of you got to be together um, in agreement with one accord. The last point that we wanted to make was, uh, our key to give you is don't forget that fear is of the devil. I talked I, about it in both of these right, episodes. Right. I got to say this. Job said it best. The thing that I feared has come upon it's me. Gonna, the thing you're Listen, afraid of is going to come upon you, boo you're boo-boo. afraid of change and what you, if you're afraid that this change is going to separate your marriage, it will. Right. But if you understand the power that you possess as the ha wife, the help me, the, the provoker of favor on Asha. his life, sha ba 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 ba, then it doesn't matter what comes. You understand no weapon formed against me, and this marriage is going to prosper. This marriage is good. God is pleased. We are fruitful. We are multiplying on this side. We produce fruit, and that fruit remains. I mean, you have to go ahead and declare what God said over it and <laughs> make sure you let your spouse know I'm team you. Whatever we're doing, we're doing it together. We're not going to be separated. I don't you care how crazy it seems. You and we are one. one. And that spouse needs to know if nobody else has their back, if nobody else is there for them, you are. Failure is not an option. You're not losing your spouse. What do you mean you're afraid because they're changing? No, no. What, the change means opportunity. Change means we're about to experiment something new that I'm unfamiliar with and know nothing about. Uh-oh, God, what are you about to do? What Let you, that fear be flipped to excitement. What you got playing, Lord? What, what do you, you have in store? How are you going to bless us in this new realm, in this new level, in this new season, in this new what arena? What is it that you're working out of them, God? What is it that you're working into them, God? See, you instead of being afraid... Go before the Lord in prayer. Find out what he's doing. You never know. This could be the hand of God moving. moving. him or her. Yeah. Go back to your vision board. Remember what I said. You have a vision board for your ministry. You have a vision board for your business. Why don't you have a vision board for your marriage and your family? Because when you have that vision board and you record those, I'm the queen of recording prophecies. The only way I don't record a prophecy that comes to me is nobody, the people, I don't have anybody around me who is discerning, but I train everybody on my team when prophecy comes regardless of how you feeling about the person prophesying capture that prophecy wow. because um, how else are you going to be able to track what God's doing if you don't know what he said you've got to go back and remind your spouse of those prophecies no uh, you we're not getting a divorce what do you mean you're not cheating on me you're not leaving me we're, we're got, we've got to preach to the nations God called us to go across the country and around the world to I minister healing in the lives of God's people no. we're mending and restoring marriages what do you mean we're raising up sons and daughters we're building empires what do you mean? We're a power couple in the kingdom. No, failure is not an option for us. And anyone and anything that the enemy sends to disrupt it, I cast it down in the authority in Jesus' name. I don't care what you're going through. You're just having a moment of weakness because the Bible says I'm the weaker one, which means you have weak moments. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to put some prayer on this thing. We're going to put some fasting on this thing. We're going to put some faith on this thing. And we're going to make the adjustments that we need to make for us to win. No, we are not failing. I am not losing you. You are not leaving. And it is not over. So, hopefully and prayerfully, we shared something with you that will help you overcome that fear. 
and overcome all of these concerns. Remember, change is not bad. Just because they're changing, it's not always a negative thing. We'll, uh, uh, Tuesday, again, we're going to talk to you guys about I'm in love with the strip. We're going to deal with these uh, Christian men that are going into the strip clubs and doing different things like that. We're about to sign off for this and do um, Ask the Marriage Mechanics Live. So I know y'all are familiar with that now. So write your questions down. As soon as this one goes off in about five or six minutes, you'll get another notification in your globe um, on Facebook. And just click on it and join us if you have questions. If not, um, call somebody, text somebody, tag somebody, inbox somebody, and send them to us. Um, this is Carlos the Lansdales, the Marriage Mechanics. Y'all join us on Relationship Radio Friday nights. Until next time, keep it explosive. Hashtag boom. AGM Radio Network. I forgot to tell them.